last game on the board before we get to your locks. It is the Ting and your Tang Tang game. College game day will be in Austin as TCU comes in. Texas, a seven point favorite. Let's go, Bill Reese Pete. It is funny just the stepping back and realizing that the top four team, uh, the top four unbeaten team is a seven point underdog to a three loss team uh, this late in the year. It's kind of not how things are supposed to work. I did appreciate, by the way, Texas. I had to kind of stand up for the advanced stats last week. All of them love Texas. I appreciated them then backing that up uh, by. Uh, actually beating Kansas State and 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 living up to projections to some degree. Um, I, 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 I get that Texas is favored, and I kind of understand why. I just think seven's too much. Um, you know, SP Plus says Texas by 4.8. Uh, I could I could live with a line between about three and three and five. That that feels like a uh, – I don't know which way I'd go in that case, but seven's just a lot. And, and what we've seen from Texas, they have actually won. Good for them. They're now up to, I believe, four and eight all, uh, under Steve Sarkeesian in one-score games. They've won two of them this year, but one of them was against Iowa State, which is every bit as bad as they are. The other was, uh, unfortunately, against Adrian Martinez, uh, who – has his own uh, close game travails. So if it's close, I do think you start to swing pretty hard in TCU's direction. Uh, and I'm going to pick TCU because of that. But Texas is, uh, I at least know why they're favored here. They're, they're still a very, very good football team. I'm going to go with TCU too. An undefeated team getting a touchdown, even on the road with all the difficulties uh, high-level teams have had pulling off big road wins. Um which has been a, a theme for some of my picks today. But I look, if I'm going to get a touchdown with that offense, with a group that believes, with a group that still carries the disdain for the burnt orange uh, on the other side, which they always do, I, I'm going to take it. Now, there are so many interesting subplots in this from Pete's guy, Quentin Johnston, who was committed to go to uh, Texas and ended up going to TCU. All of these guys, for the most part, virtually all of these guys are Gary Patterson guys, at least in terms of recruits. Patterson now a uh, special assistant to the head coach or whatever his title is, sort of working behind the scenes and in preparation for Texas, the school that he pretty much, you know, had disdain for as one of the little guys over the years. Now he's plotting to derail the best season TCU has had or best start they've had since he he himself was the head coach, whether you wanted 2014 or there, I think they're nine and zero for the first time since his Rose bowl championship season in 2010. I'm sure he still has great affinity for the players that, that he recruited, but he's a feisty competitive guy. And I'm sure that while he always burns the midnight oil, I'm sure he has had plenty of ideas to share with the Texas defensive on the field staff this, this week that might, that might help them. And I'm sure it will be a little tougher in some respects than one might have imagined based on the way Texas has played defense up to this point. But I, I'm I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with this veteran proven group, this good offensive line, uh Kendra Miller doing things on the ground. Duggan has been terrific. Duggan is a guy who's beaten Texas before, uh largely because of his running ability in a game a few years ago when he was early in his career. Johnston, if he's if he's healthy and full go, um, which has been a, a question at times this season, motivated Barbara Davis, all the guys who've made plays for them over the years. I I'm not going to give I'm not going to give away a touchdown against those guys until I actually see them not come through and and win a game in the clutch. So I'm going to give me TCU and thank you very much for the touchdown. I like the horns. I, I like the horns words. basically because there's no earthly reason they should be a touchdown favorite in this game. Um, I, you know, I think people know this podcast uh, have li- who've been, you know, listening know that I love Bijan Robinson. I've actually said, I feel like Bijan Robinson's career has been somewhat wasted um, because I feel like it'll be like when Alvin Kamara is in the NFL and people are like, wait a minute, what, why wasn't he like bigger star in college? Um, uh, Bijan Robinson, I feel like with a, a big, rabid primetime home game, this is the time when Sark just like rides him and rides him and rides him, takes a little juice out of that TCU offense. Um, I'll be very curious, Reese. I thought the crowd at Texas for the Bama game was as good as any Texas crowd I'd seen. Bit of a wine and cheese crowd. I've been there a lot of stale days. Um, I really thought it was juiced up that day. Now, that was obviously Bama noon kickoff. 
I it, I hope the environment is as rabid for TCU. The Texas fan base, this may shock you, is not a fan base that probably embraces being a spoiler, right? Like <laughs> they think you should sing the eyes of Texas properly and apologize when you don't. And there's a there's a high opinion of themselves that doesn't match a recent winning percentage. Um, that said, I feel like. They'll be dialed in at home. The one thing that gives me concern is even when Texas has won other than the Oklahoma game this year, they really haven't won that impressively. But I just feel like this is one of those goofy lines where Coach Corso would say, somebody knows something, so I'm going to go with that somebody, and I'm going to ride Bijan here. All right, fellas, let's hear your locks, and let's start with Bill because Bill came on crowing about how he did some research instead of just doing it right this second. So I want to hear it from him. <laughs> Yeah, the research did not pay off at all. I was I always start by looking at, you know, which games does SB Plus disagree the most, but it's like uh, you know, Pitt Virginia over 41. I don't I don't trust that at all. I don't trust Minnesota uh, versus Northwestern by you know, minus 17 and a half because I don't trust Minnesota to ever really like once they're up 17, they're fine just sitting on a lead. I don't like that one very much. The one I found that I can kind of trust the most, I think, is Notre Dame minus 17 against Navy. Um, obviously 17 is a lot, especially for a team that has looked as bad as Notre Dame has at times this year, but they, uh, really seem to like, you know, I was saying Baylor responded well to a pretty bad loss to West Virginia. Notre Dame has responded extremely well to that Stanford loss. They, they handled their business early against UNLV and cruised, and then they've just looked good. Uh, really first time all year, they've looked legitimately good. These last couple, no, North Carolina, sorry. They, they did beat North Carolina too. But um, they they seem to have found a different altitude. Navy's been kind of a weird team. They've exceeded expectations or projections here and there, but just I don't. There's no reason reason to trust them a whole lot. So I think Notre Dame ends up winning this one by 20, 24, 27, something like that, and, and covering minus 17. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.